calculated, estimated the time that Jesus will have to come back to fulfill the book of Revelations. Everyone has heard a story about Jesus on a white horse flying from the sky down to earth, challenging our very souls. Well, with this technology, infrastructure of medical and science is leading the way now. And it has been for quite some time, especially the last century or so. Now, not only are we able to create synthetic life, um, taking a cell, information out of a cell and putting new information back in using genetically modified information from a computer. Well, it's not going to be long until we can build some kind of cyborg that can think for itself if you able to adapt to anything. And quite scary, I would admit that. But let's take a deeper look into this new world of science and the medical infrastructure. So, as stated, Jesus has roughly 50 years to come back or else it will be far too late to bring his rapture. Humans will have evolved far out of the stretches of God and his clan of angels. Man and woman will be creating artificial beings with the ability to think, to justify and reason. And obviously the idea of vitalism and the soul which survives amongst the theologians will then, if not already, be discredited and dead. So, the big question is, how is this achieved? Well, it's achieved by using biotechnology. We can now explain, solve the mystery of what minimum gene combinations and mechanisms are needed to maintain life in a living organism and therefore replicate it until it can start to replicate itself, whether it's by agamogenesis, in other words, asexually, or conjugation, again, in other words, sexual reproduction. I welcome you all to Cyberdyne Systems and Skynet. Shortly, a presentation will be playing for you all from our very own TV channel, Cybernet TV. This is where you will find the best for artificial intelligence, combining biomechanics, biotechnology. What professions are we assisting in today? Well, the list is endless, but some examples, space, travel, medical, including medicine, robotic technology, industrial manufacturing, underwater research and marine biology, and of course, military defences. Let's take a look. Cybernet came into being with a clear mandate. Help the human race reach tremendous goals. Cybernet has dedicated itself to making this a reality with its expansive research division that is laser focused on creating the latest in robotic technology. In today's busy world, commerce and technology are all intertwined. The global village is connected like never before. That is why Cybernet is not concentrating on only one area. Instead, Cybernet is dedicated to reaching all aspects of humanity. We are determined to impact humanity in meaningful ways. Cybernet is committing a vast array of resources to help usher in the next wave of robotic creations. We want to help humanity achieve some of its largest dreams. Cybernet is active in all areas of human endeavor, from construction to underwater resources management, from industrial manufacturing to the latest in defense developments. Wherever you look, you will find that Cybernet is taking an active role in human affairs. It is important to remember that Cybernet is just as focused on the individual as on the whole picture. We know that every person has the innate ability to initiate change. Greatness comes from within. Greatness comes from within, or does it? I mean, it doesn't have to be that way. The argument over whether the universe has a creator, and who that might be, is among the oldest in human history. But amid the raging arguments between believers and skeptics, one possibility may have almost been ignored. The idea that the universe around us was created by people, very much like ourselves, using devices not too dissimilar to those available to scientists today. As with much else in modern physics, the idea involves particle acceleration, the kind of thing that goes in the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. Before the LHC began operating, a few alarmists worried about it might create a black hole which would destroy the world. That was never on the cards, although it was just possible that the device could generate an artificial black hole, it would be too small to swallow an atom, let alone the Earth. However, 
To create a new universe would require a machine only slightly more powerful than the LHC, and there is every chance that that own universe may be indeed manufactured in this way. So, we have the technology to create universe, or should I say universes. We also have the technology to create life, whether it's biological or computer simulated life forms, let's call them avidians. So man making machines. These machines can replicate their code and reproduce. They can talk, reason, show empathy and sympathy, having full arsenal of human emotions, as mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast. However, these beings would be almost human in every single way, but be without the godly soul. But moving this technology forward and moving from a computer into an actual AI being is another matter, and that will take some time. But anyway, so how does this function? What are they? Well, the Avidians, a race of digital beings, a computer world called Avida, run by scientists. Video with computer code instead of DNA that is copied, not quite perfectly every time, they breed. The random copying errors create differences in their code, which dictate how well or how badly they perform in their simulated world. Sounds all far too familiar, doesn't it? Early experiments put the Avidians on a grid of cells, and they let them live and die there. The grid had a gradient of food cells at one end, but at the other end there was far more of these food cells. But the Avidians began life where there was only a handful of these food cells. After 100 generations of breeding, a mutation led to one of them evolving a gene, instructing it to move forward in the search for more of these cell foods. When it landed in a more food-rich cell, it reproduced more quickly, and had far more offspring than its rivals. After thousands more generations, the Avidians had evolved something more impressive, a rudimentary memory. They had started moving towards the food source in a zigzag motion, changing direction when they were going in the wrong direction. To do that, they had to be able to compare their current cell to the previous one. This requires some rudimentary intelligence. You have to be able to assess your situation, realize you are not going in the right direction, reorient, and then reassess. When tests have been finalized, the experiment showed a twist. Cells that contained instructions on where to go and find food. Some of those instructions were simply, do what you did in the last cell. In order to make sense of those instructions, Avidians had to evolve a more complex memory, and duly did so. The environment sets up a selective pressures, so organisms are forced to come up with some kind of memory use, which is in fact what they do. Sounds very much like natural memory selection to me. This must be the equivalent of Darwinism, must be Ramism. This actually sheds some light on how intelligence originally evolved. The test suggests that the evolution of the ability to solve simple navigational problems depends on how first evolving short term memory. And this simple digital organism that still don't exhibit something you would call learning, this would surely lead to the creation of true artificial intelligence. It's amazing that these avidians actually evolve an attraction to light source and when used the evolved code to control a real world robot and it moves towards the light sounds kind of like artificial intelligence photosynthesis. What we're able to do is test each brain in a virtual robot and get them to perform tasks like moving across a surface. We then pick the brain that do well at the task and then we make copies of them with the random errors in the instructions that the Avidians lead to evolution, what is found is that the evolved brains have become better than traditional neural network brains at the tasks when set. The brains that have been evolved in accordance with Cyberdyne and Skynet, and the technology has proved to show the evolution of millions of connections, yet still perform a task well, and that a number could be pushed higher yet. Tomorrow and 50 years from now, Cybernet is the future. This is a seed change for the field. Being able to evolve functional brains at this scale allows us to begin pushing the capabilities of artificial neural networks up and opens up a path to evolving artificial brains and rival their natural counterparts. Also they will have a body to match, they will have a hominid structure known as a cybernetic organism. 
the flesh covering that is used on all models have similar qualities to real human muscle, fibre and dermis, including soft tissue and skin, as well as the ability to sweat, stimulate breathing and produce realistic body odour, but completely soulless. But underneath this living breathing organism is not bone, but metal. While the first generation would be metal, then we would evolve to the material of mimetic polyalloy. This is a long term goal, of course but the technology allows us to start marching towards it and like I said, this could and should be in play in the next 50 years depending on financial support, efficiency and effort. Jesus, the clock truly is ticking. From what is said in this video, it is quite clear that we are the gods.